Hello friends, in the next video we can see how to prepare CDS the correct way. Long time ago I showed how to prepare CDS, but now it's time to show something more easy and adequate. I would like to show the people a much more easy way to do, so easy that even the granny will be able to do it. It will be shown as followed. It is a recipient, as you can see here, something you can buy anywhere in the world right now. The basic idea is that it's something you can do anywhere, so as much in Spain, like in America, in the Philippines, or anywhere. So we have a hermetic recipient right now, and the important thing is to see that it has a crystal tap that closes hermetic. Because inside we have a chemical reaction. Later we have a little shot glass, a shot glass that fits inside here, so the higher the better for our use. And what we have here right now are the components. On one hand we have here the sodium chloride, NaClO2, careful, it's not bleach, and the other as an activator, in this case it is hydrochloric acid or HCl at 4% strength. Many people don't have hydrochloric acid, so we can use citric acid as well for the same procedure to make CDS. In this case we will prepare it with hydrochloric acid at a 4% concentration. Here we have the sodium chloride as a 25% concentration. It does not have to be a 25% concentration actually. There is a 22.5% concentration as a 24 or 25% concentration. It is not so important. Here we have hydrochloric acid at 4%. But the first thing we do right now is to introduce the little shot glass inside here to see how much water we can put beside it. So we put water. The best is to use distilled water, but we can use mineral water as well. So we fill the recipient in a way that no water comes inside the little shot glass. As you can see, the shot glass has no water and the water line is just below the border. Once this is placed in the right way, what we do now is to take a little syringe like this, or something else to measure 5 cubic centimeters. So the most easy way to measure is taking off the cap here, like this, and we put the thumb underneath and we fill it with 5 milliliter. We put the 5 milliliter in the shot glass. Like this, we close the cap. And now the activator, that's a hydrochloric acid at 4%, we close it as well. Another five. And we put it inside. Don't worry about the drops at your finger, we can wash it later. It is actually not as aggressive <laughs> like some people might think. Now we close the cap carefully, we don't want to spill it around. Now we will be able to observe how chlorine dioxide gas is liberated inside the recipient. You can see it here in the space above. The smaller the space, the better the absorption. In this recipient approximately fits half a liter. It is a quite useful size to make a CDS concentration. Many people ask about the correct amounts of chloride at activator. Actually, it's a saturation of the liquid, so the gas is absorbed by the liquid and it's a relative number. It depends mostly on the outside temperature. We can see now how the gas is evaporating inside and we can see how the water is saturated more and more because this gas is very soluble in water. This is the way how to do it easy. Now, once we've done this, we simply put it into the cupboard and guard it and keep it there till the next morning. So we will see. After approximately 12 to 24 hours, the two liquids have leveled themselves into the same color. We can see that the water has been saturated by the gas as well as the concentration has lost its force. To take out the shot glass, the best is to put the recipient outside where it's ventilated and so we can take it out without having to breathe any of the gas. 
Here we are inside a laboratory with a special ventilation, so it's not so important. What we do now is we open and we take out the glass. What we do now is we put the residual concentration into a bottle like uh, here. And uh, so we put the residual stuff like you see here. The important thing is not to breathe the gases. It's very useful because um, this type of residuals we can use for, let's say, um, disinfection or like for example in the kitchen for our cutting boards or anything we want to disinfect. After these 12 hours the concentration is of approximately 1500 ppm. It means 0,15%. So here now to make a higher concentration we make a second round and we take our glass, same glass, and we repeat the process with another 5 ml of sodium chloride. And we add as well 5 milliliter of hydrochloric acid. And it is important to put it carefully inside like this and put it fast inside and close carefully again. Just like this. Now we do a secondary reaction of the liquids and many people ask me why we are doing this. I could do the same in one round, but in this case I would use a lot of more of the liquids and uh, too much, it's like a little bit like the rockets when you shoot them to space on two stages. It is just more efficient. After putting the glass into the liquid the second time, it will saturate the solution to the desired value of around 3000 ppm, that's 0.3%. Now to know the concentration of the CDS that we have been doing till now, we already know that the color has to be more or less like sunflower seed oil in the case we have nothing to measure with. Obviously the best is to measure professionally. But how can we measure it professionally when the test traps are only going to 500 and we have a solution of 3000 ppm? Actually it's not difficult. We have to reduce the concentration to the desired levels. We reduce it and this I will show you right now. For this we have one milliliter. This milliliter now we have to add nine milliliter of distilled water. With water. So we fill the syringe. Here we have exactly 10 milliliters, one of concentrated CDS and the other nine of distilled water. So we take a reactive stripe and we put uh, some drops on the reactive stripe so we can see the reaction. Now we can see how it changed the color. The test stripes indicates us that it is in between 200 and 500 ppm that indicates we are at around 300 more or less. But we have to multiply it with 10 so we have approximately a solution of 3000 ppm right now. 